Thank you. It's always a challenge to follow uh, Mike. Um, so we're going to talk about the incidence of visual femoral impingement. I want to thank uh, Stephanie Buza, who's our current hip preservation fellow and did all these measurements and is joining us next year. And she's here today. Ischial femoral impingement is a cause of hip pain. It was initially described with total hip arthroplasty and proximal femoral osteotomy in 1977. It's defined as a narrowing of the space between the lateral aspect of the ischium and the lesser trochanter with entrapment of the soft tissues. Morphologic risk factors, and this was uh, published by Klaus and the group here in 2013, are leg calf perthes, coxa valga, and relative femoral antiversion. Symptoms are posterior and deep groin pain, which often mimic everything that we see. They have, though, mechanical symptoms with significant popping, pain with long strides, pain with extension, adduction, and external rotation. And in this video, this patient really did not like this position. Uh, Toriani and all first uh, defined the MRI findings in 2009, where they showed that affected subjects versus control subjects had a decreased um, ischiofemoral space between, as you can see here, uh, the line A between the lesser trochanter and the lateral aspect of the ischium, as well as the room for the quadratus femoris, which was decreased. Uh, and they also described the edema in the quadratus femoris. And the control subjects were similar to our, the, our control subjects, so the numbers seem fairly consistent. A meta-analysis was done on MRI findings in five different studies and basically showed a cutoff of 15 millimeters for the ischial femoral space and 10 millimeters uh, for the uh, quadratus femoral space as cutoffs that increased, that had a good sensitivity and specificity for uh, defining um, impingement. There was a recent uh, cadaveric study of 206 cadaveric hips that showed uh, increased femoral and acetabular aversion, uh, have more early impingement, and it's in the position of external uh, rotation and adduction. Now, a study was done arthroscopically looking at 108 hips treated arthroscopically, and they found that issue of uh, femoral impingement was more common in the DDH and the borderline DDH group, and there was edema in the DDH group in the uh, muscle, but not in FAI cases. So it seems to be more common in this group. For treatment, uh, there's a lot of uh, level four studies, case series, and reports that have shown, um, and in a systematic review, showed that there's good non-surgical treatment, which is injections and therapy, and then there's descriptions of open uh, treatment of the resection of the lesser trochanter, and as well as arthroscopic treatment of the resection of the lesser trochanter. Here's a case. This is a patient who complained of anterior hip pain and some snapping, preoperatively 14-year-old who preoperatively had a narrowed ischiofemoral space that we really didn't pay much attention to. She underwent a periacetabular osteotomy and then presented with increasing pain and mechanical symptoms and walked abducted and internally rotated. And if you look, the lesser trochanter is basically, at least in the MRI, sitting on the ischium, and she underwent a um, surgical dislocation approach uh, where we uh, resected the uh, posterior portion of the lesser trochanter and some of the posterior intertrochanteric line, which was impinging, and her symptoms have improved. There are no reports in the literature that looked at the clinical and radiographic evidence of IFI in patients that are currently undergoing a, a PAO, so we wanted to understand the risk factors for IFI in this population and possibly improve perioperative care and interoperative decision making and maybe counsel patients. So we looked at the radiographic evidence of IFI in patients undergoing a PAO, compared preoperative and postoperative MRI when possible, and changes in the radiographic measurements. And we also wanted to determine any relationship between pelvic type, morphology of the proximal femur, and outcomes. This is a retrospective chart review of all our data collected in our registry, and we included patients that had MRI in one year data and excluded patients without pre or postoperative MRI in less than one year follow up. We looked at the pelvis types, lateral center edge angle, and head to ileoischial line, and these are pelvic types, and uh, our fellow knows everything in the ob -GYN literature now about pelvises. Um, we looked at preoperative MRI measurements, measuring the ischial femoral space, quadratus femoral space, and quadratus femoris edema, presence or non-presence, and looked at CT measurements, looking at neft shaft angle, femoral version, and acetabular version. 
We had 284 hips, the majority female. 123 hips had post-operative MRIs available. The pelvic morphology is mostly gynecoid or anthropoid. Mean femoral version was 19 and acetabular version 9, 15, and 20 at 1, 2, and 3 o'clock. We found the ischial femoral space and, and quadratus femoral space preoperatively is similar both on the surgical and the non-surgical side in most cases and also the space decreased postoperatively on the surgical side in the majority of cases. Ischial femoral space narrowing preoperatively of left, less than 15 millimeters was observed in 14% of our preoperative MRIs, and contralaterally on the non-operative side, it was seen in 15%. The quadratus femoral space was narrowed less than 10 millimeters in 19% of our preoperative MRIs, and the contralateral space was narrowed in 24%. The preoperative edema in the quadratus femoris muscle was present in 10% and ipsilaterally in 8% contralaterally. Now, postoperative changes, when we add an MRI, the incidence of postoperative edema in the quadratus femoris went from 8% to 27%. And the percent, percent of patients with ischial femoral space less than 15 increased from 14 to 28%, and those with uh, quadratus femoris space increased from 19 to 20 uh, 7%. So basically everything doubled except edema uh, almost tripled. IFI was associated, as been shown previously, with femoral and acetabular aneuversion, but medialization between the two groups, the ones that had it and didn't, were the same. They all had medialization. Pelvic morphology was not associated with ischial femoral impingement, but perhaps those with the uh, decreased space had a slightly higher gynecoid uh, pelvis. The mean change in patient reported outcomes as groups, though, did not change significantly with the presence of IFI, but we're still looking at the results and narrowing it down to MCID values. Three patients have had lesser trochanter excision, and here's one example. So the evidence of IFA may affect the indication, in some cases, of femoral version correction in PAO. This is a patient that showed up this week who walks with a compensated gait, so walks with her feet forward, but has... Uh, dysplasia, a break in Shenton's line, and she's got femoral antiversion of 40 degrees on CT scan, and you can see the edema in her uh, quadratus femoris, and she does walk when she hurts with the leg abducted, internally rotated, and complains of some deep popping. So in this case, we're going to elect to do a femoral version correction at the time of a PAO. It may be a cause, and you have to think of it as a cause, potentially of discomfort after PAO surgery, and it seems to be more common as uh, been previously reported of those with femoral and acetabular uh, antiversion. This was a retrospective review. Post-op MRIs were not uniformly performed, only if we were doing contralateral surgery or if there was discomfort, so perhaps it may have underestimated the clinical importance of findings. This was a single reviewer, but her reliability was excellent. The MRI technique, certainly leg position is important, and it may underestimate the potential. It's been shown, actually, that different positions, if you let it externally rotate, the chance of impingement may be higher, and some were outside MRIs. Here's a recent case, for example, preoperatively of a patient on the right side where the LCE was 15. She had some antiversion. Preoperatively, she had fairly normal values as far as the ischial femoral impingement. Postoperatively, we medialized her. Her lateral center angle is 34, but her ischial femoral and, quadral, uh, and, and quadratus femoral space decreased, and there was some edema on the right hip. Although she was uh, improved with her PAO, when we did the other side, we took that into account, didn't over-medialize her, and tried to keep the space the same. So in conclusion, it's present preoperatively in 15 to 20 percent of our patients. The quadratus femoral edema is present in 10 percent, and the incidence of edema and IFI is higher postoperatively. Although there's MRI evidence, most patients are asymptomatic, and the clinical relevant, uh, re relevance is still unknown, and, and we're considering how this is important for us. Ischial femoral impingement, though, should be considered as a possible factor in DDH patients requiring surgical treatment. Thank you.